Well, I can't tell if it's that we live in a time of anxiety or if it's just everything that seems to be going on in the world. I think everything that's going on, whether it's politically or economically or internationally right now, is enough to put us in a state of anxiety. And, and I also think that there's a difference then between worry and anxiety. I worry about a bunch of useless stuff. But I don't tend to be anxious or have anxiety about something unless it's something really serious. Worry seems like a temporary emotion to me, something that we feel. Anxiety, on the other hand, is longer lasting than that. It almost seems like a state of being, a way of living in the world. Anxiety maybe is almost constant worry. It's that waking up in the morning with with butterflies feeling, the going through your day feeling slightly on edge, maybe like there's panic right around the corner feeling, then struggling then usually to fall asleep that same night because of it. And then you wake up and repeat. It's pervasive. It, It doesn't go away easily. I think it's fair to say then that we live in anxious times, times where no one really knows what to do or what the solutions are or really what's going to happen next. We seem to live in almost a cultural state of anxiety these days. And I keep wondering then how it is that we got here to this, this state of anxiety. Did, did we miss something along the way? Did we, did we misunderstand something? I mean, what, what's happened? I can't believe that we've always been like this as a country. Have we as a nation then beaten each other up so badly And that trust is so low between all members of society that we now live in a state of anxiety. Have we become so self-interested that we can't see beyond ourselves to the point of causing communal anxiety? Why does it seem like if we turn the news on that people have just stopped taking care of one another or even caring about each other? And to be honest then, from, from a religious standpoint, I think that maybe one of the things that has gone wrong or or, or where we've gone wrong is how we understand texts, like this one from Matthew in the Sermon of the Mount that we read this morning. Maybe what we've done is overemphasize the personal understanding of this passage and what it means for us personally rather than a social edict that it actually ends up carrying with it. We think that it's, it's all about us, when maybe what it has to do more about it is how we care about other people. We read here that God says God will take care of us, and we think that that's that. God will take care of us, so we don't have to worry about everyone else. And then we wonder then why the world seems to be falling apart and where God is in the mess of it. We seem to forget here that Matthew is telling us that God takes care of those who work for the kingdom of God. For those who serve God. And this passage in the greater context of what's going on here is surrounded by other passages where Jesus talks about how we're supposed to treat other people and how we're supposed to relate to God. And then, and then it gives us this promise that if we do those things and work towards the kingdom of God, then we don't have to be anxious about what is happening next and what is going to happen to us. Now, I think the temptation here then is to say that when things don't go well or when suffering does happen, that it somehow is God's judgment on us, that God is punishing us. But it doesn't say that here. It doesn't say that if you don't do this, if you don't take care of people, that God is going to smite you. But it does imply that taking care of each other, that taking care of other people is how we get things to go well. And we as a nation, I worry sometimes that we don't do such a great job of taking care of each other. That sometimes we do let things like greed and selfishness and power get the better of ourselves. And maybe now where we're in a time where everything seems just kind of really messed up, maybe now is the time for us to step back and reconsider where we are putting our energies and how we are using our time. 
maybe now is the time for us to consider which master it is that we're really serving and really ask ourselves if we really are serving the right master. Because I worry sometimes that maybe we haven't trusted enough in the promises that God gives us that if we place our trust in God rather than the things of this earth, that things might actually work out and get better. Maybe we haven't really trusted in God's plan of how to make things better, and instead we've relied a little bit too heavily on our own plans. Maybe we just haven't taken seriously enough the call to take care of who Christ calls in a later part of Matthew, the least of these. Maybe sometimes we've ended up worrying more about me than we have about we. And I'll be honest with you, one of the things I I keep hoping that we're learning in this country is that the greed of some affects the greater whole. One of the things I keep hoping for is that we see how the actions of others can have a direct influence on our lives and the lives of those around us. And if we can see how the greed of a few can bring down an economy or the unbending agenda of a loud minority in both political parties can gridlock the government to the point that it becomes completely ineffectual, if we can understand how few people can negatively impact the lives of many, then maybe we can begin to see that the opposite is true, right? That the few people can also positively impact the lives of many people. And then maybe we can, we can actually believe, we can start to believe that we actually can make a difference in this world. And while I really don't think that our current situation is a divine punishment being handed down upon us, I can't help but think that sometimes we might have turned from God's ways, put more faith in ourselves as humans, and trusted in the wrong master. I want you to do me a favor. I I, I want you to imagine a dark time in your life. A time in your life where nothing was working out, or or, or perhaps it was a time when you were in the midst of a tragedy. We've all had those times. Do you remember that feeling? Do Do you remember what that felt like? I can remember a time in my life where my life felt like darkness. I can remember the sense of anxiety that accompanied it the dread of facing a new day and knowing that I had to get out of bed, like my, my whole life was just swimming in bleh. And yet the next day came. And another day came. And another day came. And eventually there came a time where I could get up and it just didn't seem as hard as it did the day before. And then you put a few of those days together. And now everything seems so different. There's light in my life today. There were some mornings I woke up and I didn't even want to be alive. I mean, I didn't want to be dead. I just didn't want to be in my life. And now I can wake up some mornings and look at my wife next to me sometimes accompanied by a child who had a bad dream or thought that I just had too much room in the bed to sleep in. And my mind mind is completely blown, and I wonder how I got here, how this became my life. I asked my dad once, I I asked him if, if he had any idea, if he thought this is how my life would turn out. And he said, when I was in ninth grade, he didn't even think I was gonna make it through high school. I wake up some mornings in my house. I can't even believe that I live in a house and I have a wife and children. It seems so foreign some days, like I'm living somewhere else's life. And to be honest, I can't think of a thing that I've done to deserve these blessings. I wake up some mornings and I remember that even though life is going quite nicely right now, it wasn't without its sufferings. And it's it's easy for me to remember the hard things that I've had to see and live through. I look back and I can see many friends who who haven't survived similar situations to the ones that I've been in. Friends who've ended up in prison. I can look back and see friends who've been cut down so needlessly in street violence, whose lives ended so uselessly. 
or others of my friends who've succumbed to alcoholism and drug addiction, or other friends who just, they just never had a chance. You're never given the opportunity to even try and make it. I mean, my life has stresses and anxieties today, don't get me wrong. And I'll be the first to admit, and my wife will be the second to admit, that I am not the most responsible adult in the world. I feel like I'm winging it, and with my kids, like I'm making it up half the time. But compared to what life used to be like, or could be like, I feel really, really just unbelievably blessed. And I could take credit for all of that, and I could say that I've worked hard, and I've pulled myself up by my own bootstraps, and I've had to fight for everything that I've had, and that I'm a self-made man, even though it isn't much. But the truth is, is that that isn't true. Because if it wasn't for the help of God's people, of good Christians practicing things like love and grace and forgiveness and patience and wisdom and faith over and over and over again with me, if it, if it wasn't for people who believed in reaching beyond themselves to build God's kingdom, I'm not even sure that I'd still be alive today. If it weren't for people showing me that there is a different and better way to live than besides just living for myself or living selfishly, I think I would still be living in the anxiety and dread of waking up each morning if I would even be alive at all. Because the truth is, we've all needed someone to help us get up in the morning at one point or another. We've all needed someone with a word of encouragement or an ear to listen or a prayer to offer of us in order to make it through the dark times and the anxious times. Times like now for so many people, not just in our world, not just in our country, but also in our community right now. We are God's gift to each other. We are the lilies to consider for each other, as it were. I truly believe that God provides for each of us. But God does it through people like us. It might not be the provisions that we're necessarily looking for, but each of us are here this morning because in some form or another, God has provided for us, God cares for us, and God loves us. And the best examples we can see of God's care and God's love is through other people. You see, what I believe is that we as Christians have made a commitment to God, we've made a commitment to each other, and we've made a commitment to our neighbors to work towards not only a better world, but towards God's kingdom, God's reign on earth. But we can't do that alone. And we can't do that without trusting other people. And we can't do that if we're worried more about ourselves than we are about others. We can't do that if we aren't willing to compromise sometimes. And we're assured then that when we place our trust in God and God's plan rather than our own, and we work towards God's kingdom rather than our own, we're assured then that everyone is benefited by it. Right now, too much in our world, too much depends on our ability as Christians to help people pick up the pieces of broken lives and of shattered dreams and help them put it back together in a way that makes sense, in a way that has meaning. You see, when we, when we consider the lilies, not only are we supposed to no longer worry about or have anxiety about where our sustenance comes because it comes from God, but then we are called to take that sustenance to the less fortunate than us. I know, trust me, I know that we all are affected by what's going on in this world, whether it's politically or economically and even internationally. We all feel the weight and the pressures of the world right now. 
And when we feel those pressures, then the temptation then is to hunker down and focus on ourselves and make sure that at least we and, and our own are okay. But now is not the time for Christians to give less of themselves because God's plan is for us to give more of ourselves to the world. The world needs good Christians now more than ever before. And everyone, I believe, is here this morning because we have something to offer this world, whether it's our talents or our time or any gift that God has blessed us with. So I really think that it's time that Christians step up to do the work that God is providing us to do. And that work is for those who are less fortunate than us. For those who aren't blessed to have what we have. And those who are less fortunate than us are people who don't have God in their lives. Who don't have a community like this one to fall back and rely on in the tough times, in the anxious times, in the times of darkness. I think because most of us come here all the time and are intimately involved here, that sometimes we forget how truly, truly blessed we are to be a part of a church, to be a part of a community like this one, to be a part of a greater family, There aren't too many places in this world where you can find communities built in love. And even less who have a foundation in Jesus Christ. We are truly, truly blessed by God to have each other. But then with that comes a responsibility That by being a part of a community like this, by being a part of a church, it comes with the responsibility to bring God to the people who need God. To bring grace to those who need grace. To give forgiveness to those who need to be forgiven. And to love those who for whatever reason cannot love themselves. Not just by our words, but also by our actions, by what we do, by the choices we make in how we live our lives. To relieve a world in anxiety We need to follow the right master and trust in his plan over our own. And so now is not the time to give less of ourselves. The world needs us now to be those few people whose actions make a positive difference in the lives of many. So may you go considering the lilies in all that you've been blessed with. May you go working to make someone else's life just a little bit better. And may you go serving the right master and trusting in his plan of salvation for the world. Amen.